What's going on guys? Happy holiday. If you notice, I've really cut back on the videos. I've been kind of chilling, but this is something that has um, come across my desk. The supply chain shortages. I've been watching a lot of videos talking about the reason that we have a supply chain shortage is a labor shortage. And I started doing a little research. Do you know that the longshoremen in California can make between 95 and $150,000 a year? And this is where 50% of our imports come through the ports of California, 50%. And now other ports are starting to get backed up. And I, like years and years ago, I was in Savannah and I met this tugboat captain, you know, really, really cool dude. And we started talking and things. And, you know, when he told me he made $200,000 a year, I was like, what? Driving this little boat? He said, yeah. He says, you know, that when these big container ships come in, they have to be guided in. And that's what we do. So from the longshoremen to the tugboat captains, all of these people at the docks are making money. And you think they're like, I'm not going to work. I'm not going to make my 95. I'm not going to make my 150. I, 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 that dog doesn't hunt. I believe that this supply chain shortage was created. It was manufactured because when you create a crisis, you get to change the rules because people are feeling pressure. Because when you start to understand how things work and, you know, it's like the, the labor shortage thing, like, you know, there's a shortage of truck drivers. There's no truck driver shortage. There is no longshoreman shortage. I feel because, you know, I've been doing some research that one of the things is that certain parts of the supply chain system because let's see they load these containers off of these ships right and then they empty out the, and then they put the container on the truck and the truck is supposed to take those goods wherever they need to go and they're supposed to get that empty container back and put it on the ship and take it back to china that process has been intentionally disrupted because i was watching you know because i had to watch a lot of videos and it was essentially what was happening was they were not getting these containers back and it was a process. And once again, I feel that this global supply shortage has completely been manufactured, completely intentional so they can change the rules in the in the in the future, because with the global reset, once again, I've, I've done videos like crime is going through the roof, uh, the, the rise of the worthless people. I had some people who were saying that these folks have been around forever. And that's true. But the number of people who are worthless has dramatically increased. Yeah, there's always been crazy people. We've always had serial killers. But in the future, these numbers are going to dramatically explode because I was sitting there and I was just sitting there like these guys make, you know, because once again, when you start to follow the money, you know, it doesn't make sense that someone who can make ninety five to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year wouldn't work. That makes no sense. It makes no sense whatsoever. And I feel that what they have done is made it harder for people to get hired because to become a longshoreman, you have to join the union. You, you got You just can't walk in there and like, hey, I want to work. There's a process. And I think they've made that process much tougher than it used to be because I'm just sitting here. I was talking like, oh, my girls, all of them had all of them went out of town for holidays. You know, when you start to look at this, let's take crime which is exploding. So this is going to usher in a new mandate by the people to address this crime because um, it's getting out of hand. And also when you bring in the supply chain shortage, like, like again, oh 
couple of chicks I'm dating went out of town for the holidays. And one of them told me that her parents could not find turkeys. And then I started doing some research and the turkey supply was reduced by 24, 25%. All of this stuff that is happening is not just happening. It's just not happening. And what I am seeing is things that a lot of people need are becoming in short supply. Like give me a, give you an example. When I ordered my Porsche, and this is what the salesman told me. He said, people who were ordering the base model Carreras, he said they were gonna wait a lot longer. He said, you know, cause I ordered the Turbo S convertible, which is the top of the line. And my allocation is gonna pop up sooner because like, I just bought this 85 inch television. I am finding, cause I've been shopping my butt off. I've been getting, you know, a lot of gear for YouTube, but I've had no problems, but I'm not buying the cheapest thing. See, the things that, once again, I want you to go to the mass market. Like, take a Chromebook, a cheap Chromebook, three, four, that's gonna be hard to find. So the things that the masses can get their hands on, that's what's gonna be a problem. If you're like doing luxury shopping, you're looking for exclusive things, you're not gonna run into a supply chain shortage. You might have to wait a little longer than you normally would wait, but you're not going to experience, like if you're trying to buy, um, like I said, a $13,000 uh, MacBook Pro, not a MacBook, an iMac Pro, you're gonna get that. Now, maybe they're lesser offerings that they sell. You might have to wait a while for those, but I'm, I'm here to tell you, I feel once again, that this whole thing was manufactured because when you start to look at the numbers right now, like I, I've, I've done this, uh, there's a show, there's the Asian Ma show and he talks to truckers and stuff. And there is no trucking shortage. There is no trucking shortage. There is no labor shortage. This whole thing was intentionally created to create pressure, to create for the people to start asking for a mandate. Cause this, is, this isn't the first time or the second time or the third time that this has happened. Uh, the, the people are being manipulated because they're using their desires for stuff to manipulate their behavior. And I'm just sitting here watching this because um, it's kind of crazy when you think about it, when you look at the situation. Because, all right, let's go ahead. I've been talking about the global reset for going on three years. And I knew it was coming and it's here and it's happening. And I see it in my car rental business. Like it was the holidays, right? You would have expected everything I had would be rented out. That wasn't the case. I had like six cars before Thanksgiving and two of them went out today. And tomorrow I think the rest of them will go out. I'm not sure. But what we're having is a manipulation of the masses. Once again, like I said, I personally have not had an issue getting my hands on whatever I wanted but I'm not buying the cheapest items. I'm not buying the cheapest things. So for those of you who are looking for the best deals, the cheap Chromebooks, the turkeys and stuff, you're gonna find you have problems because um, I went to dinner yesterday with some friends and it was an interesting conversation because I have a friend, he's getting ready to start mining cryptocurrency. And you know he, he's been working on getting his rigs and here's something else. The components to create mining rigs have 10 x Like a card that cost you like 300 bucks, that card is now like damn near $3,000 because people are snapping them up. So what you're seeing is people are exhausting the market. They're pulling stuff out of the market and they're driving the prices up. The prices. Now let's talk about inflation. This supply chain shortage is going to create vast inflation. It will be 
temporary inflation, but it's still gonna be there. Like, once again, buying cars. What happened to the price of used cars the last year? Went through the roof. I went to Kelly Blue Book and I can sell my car right now per Kelly Blue Book for what I paid for it and I've had it a year. I can sell it for what I paid for it. And I know that if I was to go and to put my car on maybe car gurus or something because of the color, it's red, it's been tuned, it's got the wheels on it, I could probably get 150 for my car. I only paid 120. So what you're seeing is crazy, crazy inflation in certain segments, certain market segments, such as cars, um, you know, uh, certain brands, they, they're just going through the roof. And one of the things that you have to be aware of, because I'm like this, if a price is too much for me, I will not buy it. And this is something I learned during my storage auction uh, days. Because if you pay too much, the pr you make your money when you buy. And if you pay too much money when you buy, when you go to sell or liquidate, you're not gonna make as much money because you pay too much money on the front end. I've learned that lesson the hard way. I bought units, I spent too much money. And one of the things that you ha guys have got to understand is you're being manipulated. This whole thing is intentional. This is not an accident. It just didn't happen. COVID has been going on for two years. We're, we're at the end of year two of COVID about to go into year three. So this isn't COVID related. COVID is the excuse. COVID is the rationale. But, you know, once again, if you start to look at it, because one of the things that we did as the United States of America is we abdicated our manufacturing base to China. Um, this was a social systematic shift. My uncle Martin, he left Alabama, went to Detroit, worked for Pontiac for like three decades. He was able to get married, buy a house, have a family and get a pension. When we abdicated our manufacturing base to China, because of the differential in economies, we weakened America. We weakened America. And this is why we're going to suffer. Because once again, the labor, the, the, manuf the supply chain shortage is intentional because let's go back 20, 25 years. And let's talk about Dell. Dell, yes, Dell the computer company. When Dell was growing like crazy, Dell's people got together and they created just-in-time um, delivery of the components that they needed to create computers. So they had all of these strategic alliances and relationships with these companies. And these companies, if they did not deliver the boards, the chips, whatever Dell needed, they had to pay a very heavy financial penalty because it was in the contract. And Dell is the company that ushered just-in-time delivery for manufacturing because it used to be companies would have a warehouse, they would stockpile stuff, and they would pull the stuff as they would need it, and we got away from that. And this has created this weakness in America because with the Dell business model of just-in-time supply, any little hiccup, any little disruption creates a huge problem that takes months to overcome. Like, look at your personal finances. Look at your situation. If your bills get a month behind, it could take you three to six months to catch up. Same thing with this just-in-time delivery for components and stuff for manufacturing. If there's any type of disruption it could take months or a year or two for them to catch up. So there is a supply chain shortage for computer chips because when the car manufacturers stop making all the cars and they start moving all these chips to these other components, the chip manufacturers did not ramp up production. They was like, they just shifted to their different customer. So now that is a valid supply chain issue, but 
if you do a little research and look at the number of ships that are just hanging out in the ocean outside of California, they're, they're just hanging out because they have disrupted the system. Container comes off the boat, container goes on the truck, truck delivers. They've, that system has been intentionally disrupted. It's been intentionally disrupted. And what it's going to do, if you are a regular person or a regular consumer, it's going to make stuff that you need very expensive. Now, stuff that you want, not so much, you know, because like this television. I bought, I got a 65 inch television in the bedroom that I paid more for than this 85 inch television. Because the things that you want that you don't need, they're on sale. You can get them pretty cheaply, but stuff that you need, it's gonna be very expensive. That's where you're gonna see the inflation. That's where you're gonna see the crazy inflation. Like my car, I was in the garage, I was looking at my car, cause you know, like I said, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it when my other car gets here. Uh, parts of me thinks of maybe renting it out as a exotic car. I don't know, I'm not there yet. But one of the things that I am going to see, and cause I'm gonna look at, cause like, once again, I'm not buying any more cars because I have seen a shift in my business and a shift because the stimulus money has worked its way out the economy. And what you're going to see is people are going to spend. They're gonna spend this Christmas like they haven't spent because there's pent up demand. People wanna get out, they wanna to go to parties, they wanna do some stuff. So there's pent up demand. So the spending is gonna be crazy for this Christmas. However, people are going to overpay because they want this stuff and it's hard to get. Like I think PlayStation 5s are hard to get. Um, I think you could, if you can get your hand on some PlayStation 5 and flip them on eBay, you, you can flip them for like a thousand bucks. So we're going to see a lot of the markets react to these inflationary pressures. First, the primary market is gonna react. The secondary market is really gonna react. And the black market, the dark web is gonna lose its mind because this is where you're gonna see a lot of criminal activity. Um, I feel that credit card fraud has replaced selling drugs because it's cleaner, it's faster, it's more business, it's more money. And see, the thing is with credit card fraud versus selling drugs, like selling drugs is very much like my storage auction business. You have to consistently re-up. You, you go out, you've, you've got your suppliers, you've got your connections. And you know, just like I had to go out and buy units at the storage auctions, I had to consistently re-up. With credit card fraud, it's very much like my online course business. I don't have to re-up. I don't have to re-up. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. It's gonna be hard as hell to get me out of this business because I can create a course one time and sell that course for years and years and years. And I, I do work one time and I make incredible amounts of money. And this is what these scammers are seeing that they can do very little work and make a lot of money, a lot of money because um, with white collar crime, if you have a perfect system, you can make millions. Now, if you get caught, you'll go to jail for two to three years versus if you're selling drugs, you get caught, you go to jail for 15 to 20 years. Big, big difference. And I mean, could you sit down for five mil? I mean, that's a, that's a question I'm asking you guys. If you can go out, steal 5 million, then you have to pay back 1.5, which means you get to keep 3.5. Could you go to jail for two years for 3.5 million? And let me go ahead and add a little more context to that. The average person works 30 to 40 years to make 1.2, 1.2. So people are starting to make some calculated decisions. People are doing crime. They know they're doing crime. They know they're getting in trouble. And they're like, uh, we're, we, we don't care. 
we don't care because with this inflation with this manufactured supply chain shortage <clears throat> it has been greatly exaggerated it has been made worse because people have been mucking around with the system and there's certain parts of the system that are not working the way that they should which is the uh intentional acts of whatever whoever uh some people think it's the chinese government some people think it's our government uh but the whole thing is this is a ruse this is a ruse because like if you don't believe me go to google and look at how much money these longshoremen make they are not saying i ain't coming to work i am so this fat i mean you can make 95 to 150 thousand dollars a year with no degree you gonna leave that to do what to do what there ain't nothing else you can do to make that type of money with no degree. These guys are not leaving their jobs. They're not walking off. There's nowhere for them to go. So that's why, because when I was like, it's a labor shortage, I'm like, that dog doesn't hunt. You know, once you start to really look at this, because part of this, like I said, I've been talking about the global reset for the last three years. I knew it was coming. I knew it was going to happen. And now you throw in this wrinkle, you got the global reset. And for you new folks, the global reset is the downward mobility of a large segment of the population. You know, you're living in a house, you got two cars, you, you, you live in a house with your wife and your 2.5 kids, you have, and then y'all shift to an apartment and then, or you may shift to a van. You, you will have families living in vans families of four living in a van and then the the ultimate global reset shift is you go from house you go to homeless uh the homeless population is exploding at the moment and these are people who if they could work they would but they don't have the skill sets for the new economy now, this is something else that I have not really talked about in a long time. The new economy, if you cannot communicate, if you cannot do visuals, if you cannot do internet stuff, the new economy is just going to slap you upside your head. If you cannot do anything online, you're fucked. That's the new economy. How do I know this about the new economy? Let's talk about OnlyFans. You've got girls who are making millions because what did they do? They had a large Instagram following. Then they monetized that following and went to OnlyFans. This is who's making the meals. It's not like some chick in Iowa who's really, really cute. No, no, no. She doesn't have the infrastructure. All of the folks, all of the girls who had a huge Instagram following or a huge YouTube channel, they went to OnlyFans and they start making six figures a month. That is part of the internet infrastructure. Um, if you cannot do internet stuff, if you can't do Instagram, you can't do YouTube, you can't do podcasts, you can't do websites, you're fucked. I I'm here to tell you because I was sitting down and I was thinking, I was sitting there like, I had to be honest because, you know, when I left the storage auction business, there were many people who were thinking that I was going to go back. But once I got a taste of this, this internet life, I mean, it's like, it's like 1.30, I'm at home. You know, I rented out two cars today. I decided to kind of like, sit down and just think about my next moves for 2022 and i'm already you know i've already because i'm on the internet i've already made enough money in three days to pay all of my bills for 2022. where else can i go and make this kind of money there's nowhere else i can go there's nowhere there's nothing else i can do to make this kind of money so this is one of the things you're going to have a huge proliferation of people running to the internet and some of them are going to be skilled some of them are going to do really really well 
and most will fail because they don't understand how the internet works. They don't understand how to create intellectual property. They don't know. Because like I said, 2022, I'm gonna lose my mind on the internet. I am gonna create more YouTube channels. Uh, there's a new YouTube channel that I'm conceptualizing right now. I'm gonna create that. I'm gonna write books. I'm gonna create more content. I'm gonna create more training. I'm going to lose my mind because during this global reset, the average uneducated, unskilled person is fucked. You're, you're just screwed. Because what you're going to see during, you know, as this, these large segments of people shift down, you're going to have a smaller segment go through the sky. They're going to go to the moon. You're going to have somebody who's going to put together a YouTube channel, a podcast, a website, a brand, and they're going to make millions millions because they understand the internet and if you don't understand the internet right now like look look what happened to me 2020 was the best year of my life what did we have in 2020 we had people losing their jobs we had people uh, going bankrupt we had people yet because i was positioned to take advantage of the lockdowns and the things that were coming it allowed me to flourish. It allowed me to make a lot of money. And if you are not trying to do something on the internet right now, um, God bless you. Just bless your little heart because that's where the money's gonna be for the next 30, 40 years. That's where the money's gonna be. It's gonna be on the internet. And if you cannot harness the internet, if you cannot, if you cannot create some intellectual property, you don't know how to create a website, you don't, it, it's gonna be rough for you. It's gonna be rough for you. Because once again, just like the longshoremen, I'll speak about myself. I mean, the first time that I made internet money, and let's define internet money, pure intellectual property driven income. I wrote my book, which is intellectual property. And my first year I made $62,000, which was nothing compared to what I made in the storage auction business, right? However, unlike the storage auction business, I was the factory. I was the manufacturer. I was the supplier. I didn't have to go out and buy more units. All I had to do was just sit down and think like, what else can I create? And I created making money with self storage unit auctions. That was number one. Then I created Pimping Craigslist for fun and profit. That was my second best selling book. And I look at the landscape, like right now, I'm gonna tell you, uh, I was having a conversation with someone and you know what's gonna be really hot going forward? There's a guy who's running some ads on YouTube. The name of his program is The Edge. Training for men is going to be ridiculous. I'm gonna tell you why. In 2016, 11, I think 2011, 42% of all children in America were born out of wedlock. 42%. That number is probably 53% now. So what we have are a bunch of boys that are growing up in divergent backgrounds with no real no 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 male models whatsoever role model none none and like with the lost kings i'm gonna tell you what i'm gonna do with the lost kings i'm telling you why i'm taking my time i'm gonna create a training program for men not a how to get chicks program all right because the training program and i'm gonna give it to you like this if you develop yourself to the best version of yourself and you have success with that, getting chicks will be a byproduct of that. But what many men are looking for is a point A to point B solution. This is where I'm at and this is what I want and they wanna go there. That's not gonna get it. If you can create a remarkable life, if you can create accomplishments if you could create an ecosystem for a woman to come in these are the guys who are going to win in the future these are the guys who are going to do so well
So I'm not gonna create a how to get chicks course. I'm gonna create how to be the best man you can be course. And as a benefit of that, you will get women. But see, it's not a, it's not a point A to point B situation because how do I know this? Look at my life. Right now, the, the internet hates me. And you know, they, they come here and they leave their little comments and stuff. And every day I get out and I go into the real world and I meet people and I'm taking some stuff like my Bumble situation is lit right now. My Bumble situation is crazy. And I am having the time of my life. But why am I having the time of my life? Economics first. And see, this is one of the reasons that so many people are gonna be globally reset. They are not paying attention to the economics. They're like, essentially, all of the people who come on my channels and leave these little comments, I started to take note that whenever I would go to their channel to block them, they would have a cartoon character as their avatar. Their playlist would be mental junk food, nothing of substance consistently 99% of the time these are the people who are going to be globally reset because there is no focus on money there's no focus on economics so I have focus that's my primary focus um, just to be overshare I could have had sex today if I was free today but once again I don't put women before my work I knew I had some stuff to do. I had to take a rim to pet boys, get this vehicle. I, strange fact, I have back-to-back -back renters run over something so much that they messed up the rims. Like this rim has three cracks in it and one rim had a chunk missing out of it. So I had to order another rim today, which will be here sometime next week to get the Mercedes back. But once again, there is no focus on things that provide a dividend. Their focus, their habits, their proclivities are on BS. And this is why they're gonna be globally reset. They don't have to be globally reset, but because of their behaviors, they will be globally reset. And they will, they will pay a seat price because this is what's gonna happen during the global reset. All right, let's just say your name is Ed, your wife's name is Shelly, and you have 2.5 kids, and you guys get globally reset. You move from your house down to a van. Let's say we move the house to a van. You're going to pass down these globally reset attributes to your children, and you're going to create a very large underclass, like the, 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 the underclass is the largest segment on the social economic pyramid. It's about to explode. It's about to explode. The number of people, like, what, what I'm in Buckhead and Buckhead is trying to succeed from Atlanta. And this is what you're gonna see across the country. The wealthier segments of society are going to attempt to separate themselves from the unwashed masses but because the unwashed masses have their, their noses pressed against the glass, it's like, I like that. I wanna live like that. I wanna be there. And even though they don't have the skill sets to earn the income to be there, they're gonna still try to be there. So it's gonna be a crazy situation next 20 years. This, this, this global reset thing, it's not gonna be just for a few months. No, 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 no. Um, you're going to see a generation of people lose ground, economic ground. They're gonna, like I said, they're gonna go from a house to living in a van. They're gonna go from a house to being homeless. They're gonna go from a house to an apartment. And as they shift down, and here's another thing, and you can Google this. The longer you suffer an economic impact, let's say you're making 60, and then you got globally reset and you went to 30. You are making 60 and you went to 30. That's going to impact you for the next decade. That's going to impact your life for the next decade. And it's going to impact your life of anyone who's close to you, anyone like your, your wife, your children. 
And this, this is why, you know, like I'm not making any more videos like that because I got too much stuff to do. But this is why I was talking about these people and I was saying they were stupid. The sin isn't being stupid. That's not the sin. You cannot help how you come into the world. But the sin is to remain stupid. That's the sin. And a lot of these people will choose to remain stupid. And they're going to choose the reset. Because see, like, I don't know if you watch Stargate Atlantis and there was this, this group of people, this group, this culture called the Wraith. And they would come in and they would put their hand on someone's chest and suck the life force out of them. This is what's going to happen to a large segment of the new underclass. The underclass is going to grow. Like I said, people's like, we always had crazy people. Yes, we have. We just hadn't had this many. I mean, some of the people who were leaving these dissenting comments on my YouTube channel in the future are going to become criminals. They're going to become criminals. And they're not going to remember how moral they were. They were like, I'm doing what I need to do to get me some money. I'm doing what I need to do. Like credit card fraud is bananas right now. Scamming is bananas right now. And I say it's bananas right now because this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is now. This is not the future. In the future, it's going to do. It's going to be like that. Because one of the things that I have seen, and I spent some time watching how to be a sugar baby YouTube videos. I haven't gotten to TikTok. I'm not a fan of TikTok. I think TikTok's kind of stupid. But I started to see why there are so many girls. Cause like, you know, on the Lost Kings, I got the, why you don't want to be a sugar daddy. It's a complete cesspool. And I started to see why it was a cesspool. You will see, because if you got some time, go ahead and put how to be a sugar baby in YouTube and watch these videos. First of all, a lot of these girls are lying that you're going to get thousands and thousands of dollars out of a man and not have sex with him. That's the first lie, because uh, essentially I have been doing research about two years and these girls cycle on and they cycle off the website and they don't cycle off the website because they found a sugar daddy. They cycle off the website because they got wore out. They got tired of it. And essentially looking at them, let's take the sugar babies. What are they trying to do? They're trying to make a lot of money without doing anything for it. They're rent seeking. Rent seeking is to gain income or rent without providing value. They're essentially rent seeking. It's like, I want this man to pay me money for doing absolutely nothing. And then you go ahead and you marry that to the male population who's doing the same thing. This many males are choosing cryptocurrency because right now cryptocurrency is rent seeking. And once again, you will see some people win with cryptocurrency, but most folks are going to lose. Most folks are not going to really do anything worth writing home about. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because just like all these girls who put up these videos talking about how to be a sugar baby and how you can make all this money, and you don't have to do anything for it. The messaging has been put out that you can buy a little cryptocurrency and you can get rich. This is the messaging. You can buy cryptocurrency, you can get rich. You can buy, you can be a sugar baby and not sleep with anyone, they make a lot of money. This is the messaging. And once the messaging gets out there, you can't put it back in the can. Once that message is out there and it's been pushed, even though it may be a false narrative, people are gonna go with it. They're gonna go with it. So you're going to see 2022 is gonna be a really interesting year. My plan is to get richer in 2022. My plan is to create more content. My plan is to observe what's going on in the economy because this is one of the reasons that I don't have any person, I got, I got a car loan. I got one car loan that I, I, I kind of tore around. It's like, man, just pay this thing off. But that's it. That's it as far as personal debt that I have. And I have some business debt. And what I'm gonna do is switch all of my personal debt straight up to business debt. I will be in the debt up into my eyeballs for business. I really don't care. But personal debt, mm -mm. no, 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 no personal debt. 
Personal debt is dangerous in this global reset. It is dangerous. So you loading up on personal debt, you're going out and buying, quote, liabilities and turning them into assets. Um, I've seen a number of people who do that and I've noticed that even though they're talking about using credit to buy these assets, they don't have a lot of assets. You wanna know why? You can have the best credit in the world, but you can only get so much credit based upon your income. And that's the little wrinkle to that. I'll address that on the new um, personal finance channel that I'm probably gonna create in December and get that rocking and rolling. But guys, like I wanna tell you, this supply chain thing, it's manufactured. It is not a labor shortage. It is not a trucker shortage. This is 100% economic marketplace manipulation at its finest. And it's gonna cost you a lot of money because you're gonna buy these things and these goods and items at these inflated prices. I personally have a few ideals who's behind it, but I'm not gonna say at this juncture because I need to see a few more things but guys this 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 once again in the game of life if you want to play the chess piece you want to right now the economic public are pawns on the chessboard to stop being a pawn you need to have your own chessboard i have my own chessboard i'm not a pawn i'm not going to get caught up in this thing but if you do not have assets you do not have things to make money. Life is about to get very, very expensive for you. So Monday, the 29th, I've got a free training. You can check it out. I'll put the link below, get the audio book, and we're going to get ready to get into some. And also next week, we will get back to the training for the corporate papers and we'll get back to training for Hustlers Kung Fu. Like I said, I sent out an email saying that I was gonna, you know, it's the holidays. It's the holidays. Four chicks I'm dating, they all had to go out of town. So, you know, you, you just can't fight the holidays. When people wanna celebrate Thanksgiving, they wanna celebrate Christmas. I mean, I'm thinking about taking, you know, half of December off. I don't know yet. I don't know yet, but we will see. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.